So the unpaid internship has become a cornerstone of career progression, at least in North America. I'm not really sure what it's like in Europe and the rest of the world, but in North America, virtually every millennial or Gen Zer I know has done an unpaid internship. Now, just briefly, I'd like to differentiate an unpaid internship from volunteer work, because uh, these are two very different things. Because obviously, you don't get paid for volunteer work, and a lot of people do do volunteer work as a way of padding their resume. It's especially I was helping someone on my Discord server fill out a job application. And he didn't have any work experience. So I'm like, uh, have you done any volunteer work? Just put that down as your work experience. So like maybe you've done fundraising or you've managed some of the books for your church or, or you've even if you picked up trash at a park that can all be used in a job application or as part of your resume. That's that's OK. But that stuff normally has a public service or a not for profit purpose rather than solely making the company money. I mean, you might be doing fundraising, but theoretically, at least, the money you're fundraising is going to help sick children or public awareness of some health problem or something. It's it's not just going to enriching the executives of the organization, at least theoretically in practice that happens a lot, but that's that's neither here nor there. So most people I know have had to do an unpaid internship. So for those of you who aren't from North America, basically what an unpaid internship is, you go and work for a company for a specified period of time and they don't pay you. I mean, that's kind of what's implied by unpaid internship. Sometimes if you're super lucky, they might reimburse some of your transit expenses and maybe they'll cover your cell phone, like if you're extremely lucky. But generally speaking, they won't pay you. They won't even pay you minimum wage or less than minimum wage to be interning at a job. And the argument for this is, well, you're working there, you're gaining valuable experience. And th in some cases, this is true. Uh, if you are actually doing an internship in your field and you're actually doing things that are in line with your degree, then the experience might be, might be valuable to you. At the same time, though, the, the employees who are working there normally are getting that same experience, but they're they're getting paid for it. And in, in a sense, I think it's you can say it's an economic arrangement that's worse than slavery, because if you're a slave, your master has to feed and clothe and house you. And even if they aren't very nice, to a certain extent, if they mistreat you too much, you're not going to be able to perform labor. Whereas in the case of unpaid internships, there's an unlimited number of people who want these positions so they can basically do whatever they want. Uh, normal labor laws don't apply. So they have virtually no protection. And with a lot of entry-level positions just disappearing in the aftermath of the financial crisis and not coming back, unpaid internships are basically the new entry-level position. And this is partially why millennials and, and Gen Z are in such a bad financial position, especially when they come out of school. Now, it's not nearly as bad in Canada because, like, the tuition for, like, your entire undergrad in Canada is probably slightly more than one semester at a private university in the States. It's definitely less than one semester at, like, Harvard or something like that. So th there's not nearly as much student loan. But if you're in America, you might run up hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loans. And then you have to go do a couple years of unpaid internships. And not only are you not paying your student loans and the and the interest is building up on those, but you have to borrow more money to live in the meantime while you're working for free. And working is expensive. If you live in a city and you just have to take public transit, maybe it's like $6 a day because it's subway there and subway back. And that's pretty much the cheapest thing possible unless you can bike or walk to your work. If you drive a car to work, then it gets even worse because it's like $20 a day for parking, plus gas, plus car payments, plus insurance, car repairs, all that kind of stuff. And if you still have to incur all of those costs while you're working as an unpaid intern. In fact, if the company, per se, wants to send you to go do an errand, they can ask you to use your private vehicle as your own gas money and not reimburse you at all. Or they can say, okay, we need you to go to this city today to help out with this thing and you have to spend all that money to do it yourself. 
So economically, it's it's a relationship much much worse than slavery. I uh, just at, at a basic, <laughs> in, in a basic, I like like I said, economic financial sense, it's a worse deal for the the unpaid intern. But a lot of cases, they don't really have choice. Um, it's it's that or nothing. It's it's that, and hopefully get enough experience they can eventually get paid to do something, or they can take a minimum wage job and never be able to pay off their student loans. And this is true in all kinds of fields. It's not just for people who've got liberal arts degrees. It's true for people with engineering degrees and programming degrees and all kinds of stuff. It, the, the current labor market, at least from my experience, is very much geared towards employers. There's an, there's an excessive amount. I know in Canada that's particularly the case because we've, we bring in so many foreign professionals. It kind of gluts the market. So employers can be very discerning. And what they can basically do is have large portions of their staffs made up of unpaid interns. And after they burn them out through overwork, they just get more and more and more. And it saves them huge amounts of money. So on my view, I find the whole thing extremely unethical. Even if you want to take the argument, which is that, okay, they don't really have prior experience, but you're giving them a chance and the experience is part of it. Okay, but they should at the very least get minimum wage. Even if you're not going to pay them what they should be getting, you should at least pay the minimum wage. Or they shouldn't be losing money by working for you. You, you know what I mean? Like in um, some friends of mine case, they, they had to spend years doing unpaid internships before they got enough to get an entry-level position that was paid at another company. And if you're in the States, these people also don't have, don't have health insurance. I guess they're on their parents' insurance program if they're up to 25, assuming your parents have health insurance. But they don't have that. I mean, in Canada, it's a little better because you do have public health insurance. But what if the person needs medication or something? There, there's public programs, but they aren't always the easiest or most efficient to access. So that is the background. So here is the question. Is this legal? Because you might be saying, well, how does this get around labor laws? How isn't there like things in place for this to not happen? Because people sue over labor stuff all the time. And you would be correct. Unpaid internships are, and we'll go through this, are basically illegal in Ontario. The government will not ref enforce it, though. Uh, labor laws are generally not enforced in Ontario unless it's some human rights complaint or somebody said a, a bad word. But if it's actual like exploitation or like just taking advantage of your employees, that's not enforced. They have this whole category for white collar workers called exempt, where basically labor laws don't apply to you unless you work in like the trades or something like that. It's it's pretty lame, but let's let's go through this. So this is from the Canadian Intern Association. I, there, it used to be on the Government of Ontario website. I don't know if it's changed or they. I can't find it or they just took it down because I could see under the, the new government, under the Ford government, they probably did take it down because they love stuff like this. But I, I will say I know I looked this up uh, a year or two ago and it was still up there then before the election. So I... Even if this is no longer the case, this was the case for like 20 years of them doing this. So it, do it doesn't really matter. So employment rights. In Ontario, interns are considered employees and are entitled to minimum wage unless they fall within one of the following. The student exemption, the professional exemption, the trainee exemption, which are described below. The, the student exemption states that the Employment Services Act does not, employ to, not apply to students working as part of a program approved by a secondary school board, College of Applied Arts and Technology, or university. This includes co-ops, internships, and other exper experiential learning placements approved by high schools, College of Arts, and technology and universities. Okay, so people will often do this in high school. They'll do a, a co-op term with some local business. Now, in high school, this isn't really that bad because you're generally still living with your parents, so you don't really have huge living expenses, and you're not having to pay tuition, obviously, because it's a high school. And this, this can often be a lot more useful than in-class instruction. 
Plus, you're getting credits for it. It's it's not just experience. You're actually working towards the, the completion of a degree that's useful to you. And, and in university, this often isn't the, the case either. Um, I, I mean, in university, you also are getting the credits. I actually find, in my experience at least, that the internships you get through universities or colleges tend to actually pay. But even then, you could kind of make the argument that Okay, you're getting, I, I believe they charge less than normal tuition. You're, you're getting credits. You're getting important work experience. You're going through a time in your life when you're not really supposed to be working full time. So it, it's not as bad in that case. And I, I can kind of see that. I, I don't like it. I still think it's, it's bullshit. But I think you can make a bit of an argument for that. The professional exemption states that professionals and students trained to join these professions are not entitled to certain employment standards, including minimum wage, hours of work, overtime pay, public holidays, and vacation pay. I'm not really sure what that means exactly. I think that means, I think that's referring to white collar workers just being, having a blanket exemption uh, from anything like that, which, which shouldn't be the case. I, I think it's nonsense. Um, Whatever, though. Okay, so here's here's the one that I think the vast majority of cases fall into. So let's just go through this and let's see if by this logic, anybody who works as an unpaid intern is actually qualifies. The training exemption excludes persons receiving training from an employer from the Employment Standards Act, but only under very narrow and specific circumstances. Given the number of people who are in this arrangement, you really got to wonder how many actually fall under something like narrow and specific circumstances. A work, a work, a work, what, is that a spelling error? A work is considered a trainee, I think it means a worker is considered a trainee, if all of the following conditions are met. One, the training is similar to that which is given in a vocational school. I'd say almost never is that the case. Uh, the companies I've worked at that have had interns, they just normally don't train them and they just throw work at them and then they yell at them if they don't get it immediately done. So uh, I'm sure it's they might get a bit of training, but I doubt it's anywhere near as thorough or as... Um, formal or focused as you'd get at a vocational school. So already I'd say the vast majority of cases, that's not the truth. The training is for the benefit of the intern. You receive some benefit from the training, such as new, as new knowledge or skills. Okay, that probably does actually apply in most cases. Uh, there's often a bait and switch aspect to it where they tell you you're going to be doing something and then they just give you admin and like busy work to do. I remember when I did a summer jobs program once with the government, I mainly did filing, which I, I don't really mind because I was in university at the time and the job doing filing, but I was okay with that. That was not a bad experience. I can't say I really derived any skills from it. The employee, okay, so here's the big one. The employer derives little, if any, benefit from the activity of the intern while he or she is, is being trained. I would say in 99% of cases, that is not what happens i mean like let's think about this logically why would the employer employ interns if you can use that term if the interns were not providing them with a benefit they're just going to like have some kid come in and out of the kindness of their heart they're going to teach them how to do the job no reality doesn't work that way and almost always what they'll do is particularly for grunt work they'll get interns to do it so they need to do like i said filing or cleaning or like just really boring like paperwork stuff they'll get an intern to come in and do that for them and, and there can be a bit of useful skills acquired during that like when i've done when i've started doing some more um admin work at um my workplace there's some stuff like budgeting in there there's some stuff like accounts receivables payables billing that kind of thing and that stuff is actually very useful to know but regardless that is useful to the employer it's stuff that they probably wouldn't get done normally and sometimes like i, I know at places i've worked they just have the, the the interns do the exact same thing as the normal employees so it's like how can it really be said that they are 
not deriving the benefit. Also, if like you're a charity or something and you the person's doing fundraising, that that is providing a very tangible benefit. So in other words, by that one single criteria, 99% of internships are illegal. Your training doesn't take someone else's job. In all cases, it does. I can't really think of an example where it doesn't take someone else's job. If for no other reason, then you can always have more employees. Like if they're doing something important that wouldn't be done anyways, or, or something semi-important that wouldn't be done anyways, they'd have to hire somebody to do that. Even if the like intern is scrubbing the floors and stuff, they, they would have to get like a janitor to do that. Or they'd have to hire like a cleaning service. So that that is taking someone's job. So in like 95%, okay, so for these two alone, 95% of, uh, sorry, these two alone, 95% of cases, this doesn't apply to. Uh, your employer isn't promising you a job at the end of your training. Now, this is a very much a bait and switch thing because what they'll do is they'll be like, oh, we can't promise you a job, but I don't know. A lot of people have gone on to work here. A lot of, like, th this guy, like, Fred over here, he did an internship, and now he's department head. So we can't promise you anything, but you never know. Or they'll be like, oh, well, we can't promise you money, but we are, but people have gotten, depending on the budget, bonuses at the end of it that are similar to the amount of money that they would have made. And that's, like, the kind of nonsense they'll use. It's, it's like at my current job where they're like, oh, don't worry, uh, after your next performance review, uh, we'll renegotiate your contract and, and you'll get a raise. And then when it came up, they're like, uh, we didn't specifically put in writing you're going to get a raise, so you're not going to get a raise. And, and that's just kind of the way they, they do it in the corporate world. And I remember there was a job I was I was interviewing for, and I would have had to take a pay cut to go there. But they said, "Look, there's there's tremendous opportunity at this company for advancement. There's there's huge there's huge opportunities for you to grow your salary." And I'm like, "Could you put that in writing, please? Could I get some sort of like guarantee that that's actually the case? Because you're asking me to move and take a pay cut that I can't afford." on the promise of some vague future thing that probably won't happen. And they're like, no, we can't do that. Um, and I'm just like, okay, then sorry. Thanks, but no thanks. You have been told that you will not be paid for your time. Like, once again, what does that mean? Does that include compensation? Like in the terms of, is it being paid for your time if they reimburse you? Interns whose internships meet all six conditions are exempt from the Employment Standards Act. However, the threshold for this test is quite high, and if a single one of these conditions is not met, which in virtually no case are they all <laughs> met, the intern is considered an employee is entitled to employee standards protections, including minimum wage. So at the moment, the minimum wage is, I think, $14 an hour in Ontario. So let's go to uh, 45. Let's just see what it says in the appendix. Uh, 45. I'm just seeing maybe it clarifies some of this. Oh no, it's just a reference. It's not a. Um, it's not anything that that clarifies. So there you have it. By the self-admitted government criteria, unpaid insurance, unpaid unpaid internships are basically illegal in Ontario. I I think that's pretty clear. I, I and they even say um, they're actually stricter than than what's referenced here. But in practice, they're not enforced. And I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the Ministry of Education and like tell them, sorry, the Ministry of Labor and be like, look, guys, I need your help on this. I'm obviously being exploited. Your employee is going to find out about that. And they're, you, you can get blacklisted. They could tell everybody else, oh, this person's a trouble employee. They, they actually want to get paid for work they're doing. Um, it's, it's disgraceful. So... That's why unpaid internships are illegal and are, economically speaking, worse than slavery.